Having a rule of thirds grid, a 3x3 always on your camera display is like having a cheat code to nail good composition and framing each and every time. We'll get to these settings right now, but stick to the end. I'll show you a really cool tip where I use the diagonal grid when shooting hyperlapses. Let's get to it. Really simple guys, just head on over to the menu, go across to our red tab on the seventh page. Scroll down here to shooting info display. Scroll down to grid display and here we can pick one of three options, our three by three grid, which is as advertised, our rule of thirds grid, or we have a six by four grid, which I've never ever used, but there it is. And a three by three with diagonal. So this is, I've definitely used this before when I need center framing, center reference point, or when I do hyperlapses. So I really line my subject up right there on the bullseye or I can use these outer third intersections, but primarily use the center grid there. Also, if you do wanna see like the grid in playback, all you need to do is go over to the blue page in the Canon R5, head over to page five and down here, playback grid, select it as, as per shooting as well. A great example of when to use a grid is during a hyperlapse. And the way that you achieve this is by aligning your grid with a feature of the building or a subject snapping a photo, taking a step forward, sideways, backwards, whatever you like, then aligning the grid with the same feature or focus point of your subject. Do this again and again over at least 75 to 150 steps, taking a photo with every step. It is a bit of a juggling act. You could do a really good job of lining up your focus point each and every frame, but if you take four seconds between frame one and frame two, but 12 seconds between three and four. Because of the time difference, you're gonna see quite a few jitters and things like that, and you're not gonna know why, that is why. Alignment of your subject is very important, but it's not the be all and end all. You've gotta have consistent timing between each frame as well particularly if you've got things like traffic or clouds, it's not gonna look right in post-production. It does take a bit of practice to actually shoot this well. Keep practicing, you'll get there, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.